What a disaster these past two weeks have been for the New York Knicks. And I think it's finally time to ask the question, should we be concerned about them? I'm Bryce Gelman. I'm going to be doing a quick little video today about my 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 thoughts, my feelings about this Knicks team now that it is the All-Star break and how these two trade deadline acquisitions and Alec Burks and Bojan Bogdanovich have fit in with the team. We're going to start with this question. And I'm going to set the expectations of all you out there by giving my answer to it. No, I am not concerned about this Knicks team. And I don't think it's fair to come out and say that the Knicks aren't, aren't, aren't set, their, their lineup is good enough, the Knicks aren't built to beat the best teams in the Eastern Conference. The bottom line is they completely are. And when everyone is healthy, you will see just the amount of depth that they have. Precious Chuchua is playing 35, 40 minutes a game because of all these injuries. When everyone's back, it's going to be hard for him to crack 15 minutes a game. He's going to be the, the OB top, even though he is leaps and bounds better defensively, and especially the rebounding with Precious Chuchua. He's a much better fit behind Julius Randle than OB Toppin was. That's another story for another day. What an acquisition he was. But I do not think it is fair right now with the Knicks sitting at 33 and 22. They have lost five of their last six after winning that 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 nine games in a row. We have not seen this Knicks team at full strength or even close to it. They haven't been at full strength since December, since, since Mitchell Robinson went down with the injury or November or whenever it was. We have not seen the Knicks even close to full strength since the Heat game on January 27th. It's been almost three weeks. And the Knicks did win a couple of games after that, but then that's when they started this rough stretch. And the injuries have just continued to pile up. And and what has come from all of this is, I wouldn't say a, a distrust among, among the fans in this team, but definitely some uncertainties and, and some confusion regarding the state of this team and some confusion regarding who this team really is. And let me just clear that all up for you. This Knicks team is going to be able to compete with the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. Hopefully, they get they get the two or the three seed so they can play them in the, the, the Eastern Conference Finals. Otherwise, they're going to be matched up with them in the semis. Let's, we'll address that when we get there. But I'm just saying that's what this team is. The depth that they have built, the, 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 the deadline acquisitions of Alec Burks and Bojan Bogdanovic are going to set this team up for success going forward. If there is any reason for concern, it's the injuries. It's the lack of updates that we have received over the three main guys that are currently injured in Mitchell Robinson, Julius Randle, and OG Ananobi. And that's not even including the guys who have missed a few games recently. Those are known to be shorter-term injuries. The other three, they've been out for, for weeks now, Mitchell Robinson months, and there really hasn't been any true positive news regarding those three. But there is some concern, and it would be that. It's not about the roster construction. It's not about the cohesiveness of the unit. It's not about the lack of star power. It's the fact that the Knicks can't stay healthy. Even after Mitchell Robinson went down, you thought, okay, like that's a brutal injury. Let's see if the Knicks are able to stay afloat. Spoiler alert, they absolutely did. And then after that, Julius Randle dislocates his shoulder. We have no idea what happens with that. And then OG Ananobi is uh, day-to-day day-to-day, -day, finally goes in for an MRI, gets the surgery to to uh, remove the bone matter, the bone fragments in his elbow. Where did that come from? We have no idea. But that's the current state of the Knicks. Uh, a completely hobbled team, just, just limping into the All-Star break, just waiting for the opportunity to take a week off, especially these guys who have filled the roles of the guys who are injured, Josh Hart, Precious Chua, who have been playing 35, 40 minutes a game, they need a break just as much as the guys who are currently injured, who need to heal up. But this is a very interesting spot that the Knicks are at because they're tied for fourth in the Eastern Conference, and they are at a spot in which they will start to get extremely doubted. And it's already started. I mean, after the Lakers game, you saw, I mean, and this is a very extreme example. You saw Lakers fans saying, oh, look who... Oh, the, the Lakers beat the Knicks. Uh, Jalen Brunson did this. He was double teamed. I, for, I forgot what the, the exact stat was, but like double teamed on like 50% of plays. The Knicks had no one. The Knicks have no one. 
And what this has been showing you and proving to you is just how important, especially OG Ananobi, but but more importantly, Julius Randle. And for all the hate that he has gotten in recent years, he is a very, very good basketball player. He is a top 30 player in the NBA. And when he doesn't play, all the focus can be put right on Jalen Brunson. And Jalen Brunson, even with the double teams, even with, with entire defenses collapsing on him, he's still able to find a way to make the Knicks competitive. And he's one of three players to be a positive plus minus since that heat game, since Ananobi, since Randall went down with injuries. I mean, how, how incredible is that? And that is, I think, the biggest point behind all this. And that, that's the biggest argument that I have for the fact that you shouldn't be concerned with who the Knicks are right now and who the Knicks can be going forward because their three best players, DiVincenzo, Brunson, and Hartenstein, are the three Knicks with positive plus minuses since that heat game. So going forward, those guys are going to play. The, the other best players in the Knicks are going to come back, and there's going to be nothing to worry about. But right now, with these injuries, until we learn more, until we find out just what's wrong with Julius Randle, just what is going to happen with OG Ananobi, just when Mitchell Robinson is going to come back on the floor and start his on-court activities, we have to sit back and exercise a little caution about the expectations of this Knicks team. And so this brings me to what I wanted to talk about earlier this week. Didn't have the time to. Uh, but it, it it is the acquisition, acquisitions of Bojan Bogdanovic and Alec Burks, which, listen, I, I said it that I wasn't too excited about the prospect of acquiring Alec Burks, and I still stand by that. I don't think he's a great basketball player. I think he just can score when he, when he, when he wants to score, and... I guess the Knicks needed more scoring off the bench, but Boyan Bogdanovic is definitely the surprise out of all the potential acquisitions they could have gone out and gotten. And he will help the Knicks. He will help Randall. He'll help Brunson. He'll take the scoring load off of all of their top guys. And, you know, again, and Brunson and Randall, and he will change the complexity of this Knicks team. And it was an extremely important acquisition at that. And we will see how this team gels when everyone is healthy but again, we are just waiting for all these guys to come back and start playing because as of right now, the Knicks are a shell of a basketball team. They've got on, on a night-by-night -night basis six or seven guys who should actually be on an NBA roster. The rest are G League guys, and they are still competing with solid NBA teams. Don't get me started about what happened in that Rockets game. The Knicks got screwed at the end of the game. Jalen Brunson gets called for a foul on holiday. They win the game. The Knicks have protested. I doubt that they're going to get, it's not going to be a successful protest. The NBA is not going to basically say like, hey, like when, when we screw up on calls, when our refs screw up on calls, we'll give you the benefit of the doubt. It happens. The NBA uh, is like that. They don't like to call out officials, especially, you know, look at the Scott Foster situation with Chris Paul, his record with, with Scott Foster officiating his games, and they'll still put him on Chris Paul games because they're not looking at it as, as an issue. They're not trying to address an issue because then that's admitting that there actually is an issue. But if, we, if we're talking about this Rockets game, the fact that the Rockets went from plus four to minus one in the hours leading up to the game is a huge red flag. And hopefully the NBA investigates that. And that's why I think that it was smart for the Knicks to protest this game, because the NBA could look into that potentially as well, because that's a major issue. Because gambling right now, with how prevalent it is in the NBA, stuff like that can happen. And the, and the NBA just needs to realize that and needs to come to terms with the fact that there could be some sketchiness going on with their officials. I know it's a bad look. Uh, I know it's been a bad look in the past, but it's completely a possibility with the amount of money that's rolling in on these games. All right. That's all I wanted to do today. Just a quick little video. The Knicks hopefully will be able to turn it around. They will hopefully be able to get some of these guys back. We have no idea what's going on with Julius Randle. Hopefully, we can get some good news on that. And Anobi, hopefully, when, when the three weeks come up, I think it's about two weeks now uh, since he was first evaluated uh, for uh, first gotten the surgery, then said he was going to be reevaluated in three weeks. Hopefully, we'll learn more about that, and hopefully, he'll be back right along that timeline. If the Knicks get Mitchell Robinson back, this team is not a team that you want to face in the playoffs, and they will run through some of the worst teams in the Eastern Conference. But that will do it. 
for this episode. Uh, please, if you enjoyed it, give me a subscription and a like down below. And I will speak again. Don't worry. Don't fret. I will speak again about this Knicks team probably later this weekend, maybe the start of next week, about the state of the Knicks now that we are in the All-Star break. Congratulations to Jalen Brunson again on being an All-Star. Should have been a starter. We'll be able to we'll be able to finally watch a Nick other than Julius Randle at the All-Star game this year. All right. See you all next week.